that an American Pilgrim Museum? Hope Sarah is here. <laughs> Hello. Sarah, hi, good to see you. Welcome. All right, I'll just scoot in here. I know how <laughs> small it is. It's good to be back. Uh, I hope you're fine. I think the camera is going yes, that way. Nice Everybody <laughs> takes his spot. Yes. Uh, wonderful that you could make time and to, to have us here and with us, all those thousands of people watching from yeah, all over the world. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about the, the museum. I mean, uh, was this really a place where pilgrims lived? or? No. So um, this isn't a uh, house where any of the pilgrims ever lived. Uh, this just so happens to be the only 17th century interior of a house to be intact. Um, so uh, the museum is actually set in the oldest datable house of Leida. The original construction is from 1365. The museum has two rooms. Uh, next door we have a medieval room and the room we're in right now is in its 17th century state. Um, and it's actually furnished only with items that are also from the 1600s. So this is the best place in Leida to see how people lived and specifically how pilgrims lived. Um, most people lived in one-room homes, so this is the case here. Everything is contained in just one space um, for your daily life activities. Um, this room is actually the same size as William Brewster's house, and you actually have been talking about William Brewster uh, on the way, and I know that later you'll see the location of his old house. The house itself is gone, but looking at this room you can get a feel of the amount of space that he had. Uh, not everyone was actually that lucky. This room is twice the size of a poor family's house. So if you were to build a wall in the half of it, this is the space that um, or an ordinary poor family would have. So the way a house is normally organized is quite minimal. Um, the fireplace is the kitchen. Uh, we still have the uh, cupboard bed or bed stay, which would have been uh, the bedroom at the time. And in the corner, we have a little door, which is where the toilet would have been. Most of the time, toilets were in the garden, but this house doesn't have a garden, so that's where they put the facilities. Um, the room itself is furnished with items, as I said, that are all period. Uh, most of them are Dutch or English, but we do have a couple of American elements. Um, this chair is actually the only piece of furniture that is from America. It was made in uh, Plymouth Colony. So we have some um, objects in the room that are just illustrating daily life, and some of them that are more specifically closely linked to the pilgrims. This is one of them. Um, other items that we have that are... Um, more closely related to the pilgrims are the books that we collect. Um, we, uh, for a little while now, have been collecting books that appear in pilgrim libraries, so books that pilgrims actually read. And the latest addition to this is a Bible. I'm going to try to show this to you with a mic in the other hand. Um, this is a Geneva Bible, which is the Bible that the pilgrims favoured. This one is from 1602, um, and the... Um, main characteristics is that it's a Calvinist translation in English and it has little comments in the margins. I guess you can see them from that far away, um, which indicates that there is an interpretation already that goes with the text. So we were quite happy to have, to have this particular book. Uh, but not all the books that the pilgrims read were um, religious books. So we also have this book, which is about military strategies. Um, it appears in the library of Miles Standish, and it shows how soldiers are supposed to behave on battlefields. It's also in English, and you have little diagrams showing how soldiers should have been behaving on the fields. Um, so all of these books constitute a sort of um, a literal intellectual baggage that the pilgrims traveled with, and this is actually the title of the latest book that the um, uh, museum published. Um, it is a catalogue of the different books that we collected, and it also includes essays from different specialists, um, among the which, which, of course, uh, Jeremy Banks, the director of the museum, uh, but also other people participated, and Donna Curtin is another example of them. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much what the museum is about. I thought also that I will show you our um, money box, because yeah. you actually passed by uh, the place where it's actually from. Yeah. I'll move this. 
our money box is actually from Onzeliwe Vrouwenkerk. And as you heard before, this is where the Walloons um, used to have their services. So it says in French, pour les pauvres, for the poor. And you would put a coin there before or after the service for charity. Um, and so now we actually still use it for the museum. So <laughs> it's a nice touch to have, knowing that some people actually went to that church and then traveled with the pilgrims to America. Thank you so much, Sarah. I You're mean, welcome. it's uh, wonderful. Um, the Intellectual Baggage book and everything else that Jeremy has written, is there a place that people can go for more information if they want to maybe order the book or read yes. more about it? So um, for this book, you can actually order it on Lulu, which is the, um, the publisher... Um, of the book, and this is the case for most of Jeremy's books. So they're not all from the same publisher, but you can always look for them this way. Um, so this one is from Brill, and yes. the latest one I showed you is uh, from Lulu. So okay. that's the best place to Thank look for so them. Thank you so much. If people want to read welcome. more, and of course visit the website of the Latin American Pilgrim Museum. Yes, yes, there's a lot of information on there as well. All right. Thank you so much for uh, hosting us. And uh, well, it's weird, but I of course hope that soon you can have people from the US coming here again because yes. every time I was here for the past three years there would also be I would have a meeting with you or Jeremy and there was a knock knock on the door and somebody from the US came exactly. you know uh, yeah. in search for their uh, um, for their ancestors and it was um, I mean it's a wonderful place to be so I hope uh, that people can can come here soon again yes uh, we're going to open again at uh, the beginning of June um, trying to work with some of the restrictions we have of to course, be careful yes. for. Yes, you're not um, a very large museum. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, before we have uh, tourists that come from further away, it's going to be a little while it's as well, but I'm while. looking forward to it. All right. Well, this way, uh, thousands of people have been able to visit, uh, visit the Lovely. museum at least today. <laughs> so thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome. All right.